Hello programmers, today we're going to talk about vectors versus arrays. I'll start out with an array of three integers, so I've specified the size of this array, and then I've got three items in it um, that are all integers. I can access any of the items inside of that array with an index, which is uh, the position in the array, and remember we start at zero for our position. So I can print out what's the first item in the array, and I'm going to see I'm going to see that 4 is the first item in the array of my favorite numbers. And then what about accessing the size of the array? Well, we can try saying, uh, let's go ahead and print out the size of this favorite numbers array and see what happens. And we might be surprised at what we see when we run this we're printing out the first item in the array and then we get a size of 12. Well, why is that when we only have three items in the array? Well, each of these integers takes up four bytes of memory. So four plus four plus four, that's where we're getting our 12. So if I want a, a real size of the array, a common way to do that is to divide the size of the whole thing by the size of an individual element in that array. So we can pick either position 0, 1, or 2. They're all the same size. But now if we do this uh, division, then we're going to say, OK, the size of the array is actually 3. There's room for 3 items in there. And we're kind of stuck once we set our size, unless we're using dynamic memory allocation, then we're stuck with this size. And we can't change our mind and make it bigger or smaller. Um, there's just no way to do that unless you're using dynamic memory allocation. Well, here's another way to specify uh, a list of integers. We can use something called a vector. So I'm going to include the vector header. And this will give me something very similar to an array of integers, only it's resizable. And there's a whole bunch of useful functions that we can use with vectors. So I'm going to say vector. And let's see, we've already got our favorite numbers. So we'll just do favorite numbers, too. And we can set up. So this is a um, standard template library class template that needs us to specify what do we want in that vector. And I'm going to say I want integers in that vector. And I can set up the initial integers if I want to say the integers are 4. Well, maybe I should make them different. Let's say they're 1, 2, and 3. So I've specified a vector with three different integers in it. When I'm accessing the vector and trying to figure out, well, what's in position number one of the vector, because the vector um, has positions just like an array does, then I can do something very, very similar to what I did before, favorite numbers two. And I'm going to see that this prints out uh, the first item in my vector. So this is the first item in my array, 4. The first item in my vector is 1. And then the size of my array is 3. Well, what about the size of the vector? I'll bet there's a simpler way to do that than this weird size of the whole thing divided by the size of an element. And there very most uh, certainly is an easier way to do that. Favorite number is 2. And there's a whole bunch of functions. When I type dot, I can see there are a variety of functions I can use. And one of them is size. So I'm going to call that size function. And all my print statements are starting to get confusing. So I'll do size of vector. And I will compile that. And we're going to see that the size of the vector at this point in time is 3. Well, I did say that the vectors are um, like arrays that you can resize. So what if we were to add something to the vector? Well, there's two vector. And I did say that there's a whole lot of functions you can use. One of them is going to help you push something to the back of the vector. So the vector is going to grow um, kind of like a, a, a line of people at a grocery store. So you'll always add people to the end of the line. You're going to push something to the back of the vector. So I'm going to push maybe the number 99 onto the back of the vector. And if I wanted to verify that that is actually there, 
in position number three, I could do this. There's another way to access what is at a certain position in the vector, and there's a, a method at that you can call on the, on the vector class. And then I said that the size had changed because I've added something, so let's just print the size again, and we'll verify that we have gone from a size of three to a size of four. And I'll go ahead and run this. And we've got our original vector size is 3. We print out the new item that we push to the back of the vector, which is 99. And now we've got a size of 4. So the vector is already seeming pretty useful because we can change the size of the vector. Um, how do we go through and print every item in the vector? It's going to be the same way we go ahead and print every item inside uh, an array. So, but anyway, we're going to go through and we're going to print the different numbers in our array first and we're going to see that the numbers are 4 and 26 and 14 and then how would it work for the vector? Well, we can access it exactly the same way. Um, we've just changed the name of the variable so we're dealing with our vector and then we get 1, 2, 3. And in fact, we could make this even better code by saying favorite nums to dot size. And then we're not hard coding that the, the loop is going to go through three times, but instead, whatever the size of our vector, that's how many times we're going to go through and print out the items in the vector. Well, there's another way that's a little bit confusing when you first see it, but another way to do essentially this, to go through the vector and print the contents of everything inside of it. And that is using iterators. And iterators, at first they seem just really confusing because we already have a way to go through and print everything in the vector, um, but later on they're going to make a little bit more sense. So how would we iterate through every item in the vector? Well, we're going to create a vector of integers iterator. So that, the whole thing is the data type. So this will match whatever it is you want to go through and look at every individual item of. So we'll have a vector of integers, iterators, so we've got the scope resolution operator and iterators, and then a variable name. Um, so I'm going to say IT for iterator. The iterator is going to be pointing to some element in your vector of elements at the very beginning we can point it to the beginning of our vector, so it would be pointing to whatever the first element is, and we'll keep going through the for loop while that iterator is not pointing to the end of the vector, and the end of the vector is actually going to be looking at outside of the vector, kind of at the very end, if you were to dereference it there, you're going to be looking outside of the memory you've got allocated, so that's no good. And then you're just going to increment the iterator. Each time through, you're going to be looking at the next item inside of that vector of integers. And then I'll dereference the iterator to be able to get the number of what number are we pointing to.